This video is brought to you by Aiming Hobbies and RC Trophy Chasers. Learn how you can save 10% on your next purchase in a moment. Even though 10th scale can be considered a more beginner friendly class, 8th scale, especially during the summer months, tends to be much more popular and widespread. Getting into 8th scale though can be considered much more difficult compared to 10th scale, as there are many more choices to choose from in terms of, well, everything. Like before though, I'm going to do my best to narrow down and simplify those choices to make getting into 8th scale RC racing that much easier. Before we begin however, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, RC Trophy Chasers. RC Trophy Chasers is an RC store based in the Carolinas and is a distributor for Mach 1 servos and tools, DFX graphene batteries, and Motive motors, all of which I've personally tested and very much enjoy. RC Trophy Chasers also carry many different brands such as Hobbywing Electronics, Facity Bearings for 10th scale vehicles, lead finger bodies and wings, along with a few other things that you may find useful. In fact, everything you see on the Schumacher you see here is supplied by RC Trophy Chasers, save for the transponder. I've left a link in the description below to their website and an annotation above, and the first 10 people to use the code ROACHRC565 will get 10% off their next purchase. The website is rctrophychasers.net, and the code, once again, is ROACHRC565, all caps, no spaces. With that out of the way, let's get into the big cars. Before we talk about all the parts you're going to need, let me talk a little bit about what class is going to be the best choice for someone looking to get into 8-skill racing. Let me get this out of the way right from the get-go. Even though Nitro Buggy is the premier class for RC racing as a whole in the modern world, I very much would not recommend it for a beginner, both buggy and truggy Nitro classes. There's far too much going on to take into account and far much money gone into fuel and engines in case something goes horribly wrong. As a result, I will not be talking about Nitro vehicles in this video any further. This leads us to two primary classes, E-Buggy and E-Truggy. Both of these classes are expensive to get into, but aren't as expensive as Nitro vehicles in the long run, and they are much easier to get going. There's a reason why E-Buggies and E-Truggies always have more entries than their Nitro counterparts at most events. This, however, is where a lot of people tend to disagree on what class should be considered the more beginner-friendly class. On one hand, E-Buggies are more popular, better at teaching you how to drive, and arguably cheaper, and easier to get parts for. On the other hand, Truggies are much easier to drive, easier to tune and set up your track, and arguably cheaper in the long run as tires, even though more expensive, tend to last longer. For the purposes of this video, we'll be going over the more popular class, 8th scale e-buggy, as that's what I have more experience with and what I personally recommend to a beginner under most circumstances. Another thing I'd like to get into your thoughts is the fact that 8th scale, even e-buggy with more entry-level electronics, is still a very expensive class to run. Now I have done a video explaining some ways you can save money in the world of ace skill racing, but overall it's still not going to be a very cheap hobby to take part in, and this is for a few reasons. For one, ace skill vehicles are put under a lot more stress compared to 10th skill vehicles. Because of this, pretty much all parts of an ace skill buggy will need to be refreshed or rebuilt after a certain amount of race days. Shocks will need to be repressed with fresh shock fluid, bearings will need to be replaced after every few runs, generally once a month to three months depending on how often you run and even chassis plates will wear down over time and need to be replaced after a year or so. Again, it's depending on how often you run. There's a lot of things that goes into 8th scale racing, both in money and in time, even at an entry level. My advice would be to stick to a single car and invest time and money into that one car, aka buying springs, shock and diff fluid, spare parts, and tires. Luckily, 8th scale cars are built to handle abuse, so breaking one is much more difficult compared to 10th scale most of the time at least. If you're still committed to getting into racing though, why don't we continue? Now there are a lot of 8 scale buggy platforms out there, all within the $650 to $750 price range. Little side tension here. I said in my 10 scale video, I made a point to say that buying a kit is better in the long run compared to buying used or an RTR, due to the fact that it will teach you how to work on your own car better if and when you need to do maintenance and repairs on your car. Now I still stand by this, but for those of you looking to get into racing on a more budget and I wouldn't entirely rule out buying a lightly used race buggy in order to save money and time. 
Now again, if you have the money and time to build your own kit, that's what I recommend, as doing that will give you a better idea and starting point in terms of knowledge than if you were to buy used rollers or RTRs. However, buying a used roller or RTR buggy isn't the end of the world in this case. With that side tangent over, let's go over a few of the brands you're going to see in the world of 8th scale RC racing. Again, unlike 10th scale, there are a lot of very viable choices of platforms to go with if you want to get into racing. So many, in fact, that it took me a solid 45 minutes to explain them all in two previous videos, which I'll link in the description below. When choosing your platform, there are many different factors that you take into account, but the main one you should be how much support does that platform have at your local track and beyond. Which brands do have support largely depends on where you happen to live. For example, in the southeastern US where I live, the main brands that you'll see in RC tracks will mostly be Associated, S-Works, Techno, and HB, with a few other brands making experiences here, like Sparco and Mugen also being used. Now I was going to go over every region I even had a vague idea of what was popular, but I realized that all I could really do was guess. So if you watched up to this point, be sure to comment on what brand is most popular in your local track in the comment section below. Anyway. The reason why you'd want a platform that's well supported at your track is for a few reasons. For one, you'll have much better support and advice on how to fix your car if something goes wrong. Not only that, but someone is much more likely to have the part you need if something does go wrong and you don't have the part yourself. On that same note, you'll also have much more setup support for your platform if other people around you have the same one. To put this in perspective, I'm one of two people at my local track who runs a Gamma Buggies. So for the most part, I'm on my own for general setup tips. On the other hand, if I ran something like a Techno or Associated, I would have much more support around me to help me figure out certain quirks and setup changes needed for that particular platform. If you want my own personal recommendation for a beginner, I would either recommend Techno, Associated, or Mugen in the US, X-Ray, Mugen, or Associated in most parts of Europe, Agama in the UK, and Kyosho in most of Southeast Asia. Now this isn't gospel, and I don't want you to take it as that. Those are just the brands I see most in those specific areas. There is a whole lot of overlap and nuance depending on where you live, so if you want to try a different brand, don't let geography stop you. Now that we got the brands out of the way, let's go over a few of the different electronics that you should go for in e-buggy, starting with the battery situation. Unlike batteries in 10th scale, the battery configuration used by 8th scale e-buggies isn't universal. Some buggies will use one configuration, some will use another, and some will allow you to use multiple different configurations. There are currently four main types of battery configurations used in modern day, so let's go over them and which cars use them. Forest stick packs used to be the most popular form of battery packs for 8 scale race vehicles, but they seem to have fallen off just a little bit as certain brands move to more modern designs. The buggies that use this configuration are the Hot Bodies E8 Worlds Edition, the Agama N1E, the Sparco F8 e and I think the Techno EB48 2.1. Next up we have the Forest Race Shorty Pack, this one I don't have on hand. These batteries became much more popular not too long ago and are used in a few different buggy these days. The buggies that use this battery configuration are the Mugen MBX8R Eco, the Techno EB48 2.1, the Sparco F8 e the Hot Bodies E8 Worlds Edition, and the Team Associated RC8 B41. The most popular form of battery configuration will be the saddle pack configuration, using two 2S shorty packs. In an e-buggy, the battery is the heaviest part of your car, so spreading that weight out or keeping it close to the center can be very beneficial either stability-wise or handling-wise, respectively. The buggies that use this saddle pack shorty configuration are the Team Associated B4.1e, the S-Works S35 4E Evo, the Kyosho MP10e TKI2, the Sparco F8e, the Agama N1e, and the X-Ray XB8e 2024 edition. The last battery configuration would have to be the two 2S stick pack saddle packs, very similar to the 2S shorty packs, just longer and higher in capacity and weight. The batteries that use this configuration, or can use this configuration, are the S-Works S35 4E Evo, the Sparco F8e, and the Kyosho MP10e TKI2. There is some overlap for these buggies and what batteries they allow you to use, so be sure to do some digging, aka reading the manual, to be sure you spend the correct amount of money on the right thing. One side tip about batteries, specifically pertaining to saddleback configuration using shorties, is the milliamp hour or MAH rating. E-buggies tend to be very power hungry, and the mains for races for 8 scale in general tend to be longer than them with 10 scale, over the 8 minute mark. 
Having a higher capacity battery will put less stress on it when you're running it during a main and will help avoid over discharge. Anything rated above 6000 milliamp hours will work just fine for eBuggy. Another tip is to always storage charge your batteries when they're not in use and you plan on storing them for an extended period of time. You can charge them the night before rate stay, but leaving a battery at full charge for long periods of time isn't good for its lifespan. On that note, it would also make sense for you to buy yourself a LiPo safe storage bag or an ammo box from the gun shop should you want to be extra sure that your batteries don't spontaneously combust and burn something down. Some tracks even require you to have these safety measures in place to be even raced there in the first place. So in considering how dangerous a lipid fire can be, I don't blame them for enforcing it. Moving on to the ESC, once again there are many options out there for ESCs from many different companies. The main ones I see personally at my local track will have to be Hobbywing, Tekken, some Reedy, and some Exalt. Other brands are used, like Trinity or R1, but those are the main ones I tend to see. Unlike intense skill racing though, you do need to solder your own wires to an ESC most of the time. Now this may sound daunting at first, but trust me when I say it isn't as difficult as you may think. All you need is a quality soldering iron, good solder, flux, and relatively steady hands. This isn't going to turn into a guide on how to solder. What I can say is that it's more than likely not going to take as much solder as you think to make a good soldering joint to your ESC and motor. As for the connectors you're going to use to connect your battery to the ESC, unless you're running a 4S stick pack, 5mm bullet connectors tend to be the standard. However, with 4S stick pads, it is possible to run an IC5, XT60, or even Dean style connectors without much of a fuss about loss of power from the motor. Speaking of the motor, unlike in 10th scale where the power of the motor is rated in turns, the power of an A scale motor is rated by KV. Again, this isn't going to turn into a guide on what exactly KV means internally for the construction of the motor. What I will say in layman's terms is that the higher the KV rating, the faster the motor will spin, the more torque it will have, and the stronger the ESC you will need to run it. You can usually check to see what KV rating your ESC can handle on 4S LiPo by reading the manual that comes with it or just by looking at a description online. The size motor you go for is always going to be the same 99% of the time in terms of diameter, a 42 mm diameter can. Lengths may differ depending on the size of the manufacturer. As for the KV rating you should aim for, it really depends on your driving skill and how large of a track you plan on running. I personally run a 1950 KV motor from Tekken, but to be honest it does feel a bit underpowered here at Loganville RC Complex, so I might upgrade to a higher KV rating soon enough or just gear up on my pinion gear. And lastly, we have the servos. Much like 10th scale, you don't really need to overpay for a $250 servo unless you plan to make usage of all of its functionality. You can get by on a cheaper, slightly slower servo, and for some people, that slower speed might be good at making the car much more manageable and less twitchy. Unlike 10th scale though, it's not just speed you're after, it's durability and torque to handle the much larger wheels and tires on an e-buggy. Much like the last video, I've linked a bunch of different options you can go for in the description below should you choose to use them. Some last general tips I'd leave you with are these. For one, since 10 scale is much more expensive both in money and time, it would make a lot more sense to stick with one car and invest in lots of tuning options like springs, shock and diff fluid, and other tuning aids specific to your car. Tires are probably the most important tuning aid you can get. So be sure to add as many different tire choices to your arsenal as possible that work at your local frack for different conditions. It will also pay to invest in as many spare parts as you possibly can to make sure if something goes wrong, you'll have no you need to fix it. I'm talking about pretty much all the wear parts. Parts you think might break, including arms, shock shafts, wheel hubs, bearings, shock towers, and many other things. And that's all for now. If you guys enjoyed this video and would like to see more, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, this is your second reminder to check out RC Trophy Chasers in the description below. First 10 people to use my code ROACHRC565 will get 10% off their next purchase from them. Also, if you want to support me another way, you can support my Patreon where I post updates and teasers to my next videos. Speaking of which, I'd like to thank my active patrons Michael Williams, Casey Nix, Ben Reeves, RC Discord Server, Dave Armstrong, Rob Bettingfield, Caden Merckx, Ian Petrie, Logan Judkins, Zach Hodds, and especially Buddy Howell and Morrison Watt. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.